Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of the Lobo Cancellation Special. Um, it's funny, I was giving all this static to the birthday party clowns for one day, they like all covered the same exact story. And all my videos <laughs> recently are just stuff that Wes, with usually somebody else, already did. So I think Wes reviewed this yesterday, and I'm reviewing it today, but I have uh, different insights, hopefully. Um, before I start, Comic Book the Comic Book, A Functional History of Modern Comics, and uh, good day today. I uh, paid the invoice for Wave 4 of Fulfillment for Jawbreakers Forever and First Kill. Wave 1 went out last week. People should be getting it, like today. Um, and then I sent the <coughs> invoice for Wave 4 today. So I like, uh, you know, what is it? So you have the inventory, so this is wave four, so these are all the items, the different SKUs, and then I make sure I have it in inventory, and then I send off the list to the fulfillment center. And I am watching Penguin. I got about 20 minutes left. Uh, so anyway, um, wrong tab, and there we go. So this is the Lobo cancellation special, and uh, man, so there's like 10 days until uh, Absolute Batman. And obviously I'm counting the days if I know the amount of days. But um, I would have counted down to this if I would have known it was going to be <coughs> so good. So first of all, when I was talking about this the other day, I feel really bad about this. I said this artist is Kyle Starks. That's the writer. It's Kyle Hotz. And um, he's always been good, but he's never been better. So, I mean, if you look at Lobo, traditionally, very good artists. I mean, Bisley, Simon Bisley, multiple times, just kind of going back uh, to this character, really define this character. Um, so when you are doing a Lobo special, it's just not some anthology that has Vita Ayala writing an eight-page story like you really have to bring it and um, uh, specifically the art story is pretty damn good but the art is just <coughs> oh my god so um let's just uh, jump right into it one of the things I like about this is it goes places that you don't think it's going to go so it starts off on this planet and uh, Lobo has been marooned there. Um, he uh, got dumped there. He can't fly. He can't teleport. And these people don't have uh, a space travel yet. So he's been there for a while. Actually, let me give a footnote. This story takes place at a very specific moment in time between the events of the Omega Men and Superman 2024. Is that the Omega Men with Tom King? That was like 10 years ago. So he's been gone for a while, and that's one of the points of the story, is that <coughs> he's been on this planet, which is a great analogy for, you know, not really being focused upon that much. I mean, it's been his lesbian daughter. <laughs> By the way, as we were all going through the SJW era, I think everyone knew it was weird, but... As it's essentially over with and looking back on it, it's even crazier. Like, everything was gay. Every every character, every, every hire, every single thing was gay. Everything, it's just, it's just so crazy. And now it's over and they're like, I will be watching a show and a man and a woman will kiss and I will be, like, shocked. Um... But anyway, so uh, Lobo was kind of gone during this very, very gay era, and uh, they're bringing him back, and not just in some stupid anthology written by Danny Lore, but like a really good story, a long story. It truly is a special. They don't have a bunch of different artists. There's one artist. It's Kyle Hotz. He's really freaking good. So uh, one of the things that I was fun, uh, I thought was fun about this is there's kind of a pattern to these Lobo gets hired, he assaults somebody, he goes to do the mission, he assaults someone, there's a twist, he assaults someone. This one, they spend like 
a third of the book <laughs> just him on this planet where he doesn't want to be there and the funny thing is the people don't want him there either you might say well that's obvious he's a crazy killer but like he killed almost everybody except for like this couple and uh, a few other people and they're like fuck you dude just fucking kill us we hate you you destroyed our entire society so they're always just bumping their gums at this guy who kind of doesn't want to kill him because he doesn't want to be alone because after he killed everyone on his planet he was stuck there alone so um uh the uh i know wes or at least i think he made a couple comments like made me think that he's read some Kyle Stark stuff that he didn't like. All I really know about Kyle Stark is he wrote this book called Sex Castle, which was like a, kind of like a MacGyver type of thing. Um, and it was a while ago. Uh, I thought that was funny. Um, but I can't name anything he's done uh, since then. So uh, Lobo uh, gets hired, so he goes off this planet and then you see like the adventure start like it's like half of the book a third to a half of a book um and then uh so he finally goes to like start doing the mission so he goes off to this other planet you get these really really great um uh designs uh and then um he gets this little buddy who's essentially a living emoji and he names him my dick so it can be like here hold my dick watch my dick keep an eye out for it, my dick uh, it's uh, the only issue with that is it's spelled m i d i q so in my mind i read it as medik so like you understand what i'm saying it should have been like with a k or like m i d y k something like that um, but anyway, so he's he's traveling around with my dick, and he goes to town with my dick, and it's, it's a funny joke, but he should have typed it differently. So uh, he goes to this uh, uh, bar, and um, uh, they don't really give a fuck about him because he's been out of the game in the DC universe as well as you know publishing. So I thought that was a really cool bit that you expect you're used to just everyone seeing Lobo and just shitting themselves but they're just like who the fuck are you and there's a uh, uh, so uh, that was an interesting twist this uh, this dude is is wearing his uh, motorcycle leathers I did or I do I don't know if I want to challenge this I'm just gonna ask a question because I'm not an expert in DC but I've read a lot of Lobo and I've read a lot of Lobo recently him having a a knife all the way through his head he was basically controlled to do this to himself it it seems like a deadpool thing it doesn't seem now i've seen him like with like like a ninja star or a shuriken or he'll you know have stuff like just make it like a, an inch into his hide but this type of situation not really i know he regenerates but he's also basically invulnerable so I, I don't know it just it like I see that and I just say Lobo like that's not or screw that one up I see that and I think Deadpool not Lobo um, but I might have missed something um, so actually though this uh, the mental the mental powers versus the physical strength uh, which is <laughs> that was one of the things that bothered me so much about um, uh, Critical Drinker's review of The Crow is he was doing this like Goo Goo Gaga thing where he's like and then he goes up against an old man and it's like an old man with psychic powers who instantly you don't want to mention that in your quote review but like the physical powerhouse against the intellectual genius or the you know psi powers I came up with this idea um, should probably do a whole video about it Basically, it's um, Psycho Fonzie. <laughs> um, so I've talked about it in some uh, community posts. I might have mentioned it in one of the recent videos. Um, but uh, I decided that he needed powers. He couldn't just be a really tough guy. Because you can't be a really tough guy and terrorize an entire town by yourself. Like, even if you can beat up everyone, two sheriff's deputies will just, like, 
stand 20 feet away with some scatter guns and they'll just kill you. You'll be drunk and somebody will just like hit you in the back of the head with an axe. So we need some psychic powers or some sort of supernatural powers. So I just came up with this this morning. I'm so excited about it. Um, his Well, he has several different psychic powers, but one of them is locational offset. So he's in front of you and you're about to punch him in the jaw, but he's actually like a foot or two away from you. He's just putting a little whammy on your mind. So you see him being in a spot that he isn't exactly in. Now you might say like, that's kind of, it's hard enough to fight someone and actually hit them while they're moving, while you're moving. Imagine if the person you're fighting is actually a foot or two to the left, to the right, or behind where you actually, you're just constantly just swinging and missing, swinging and missing. And then he'll hit you and you'll be like, where did that come from? And then you kind of readjust. And I was like, this is like a, especially like, you know, sniper goes to shoot you. They shoot like a couple feet away from you because they, they see you being just slightly offset. So I love that power. I'm very excited about using that one. Um, and the farther away, like the the illusion kind of breaks, but he can like he can fake like a foot or two, you will never notice the difference. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, a lot of great uh, kills and blood and uh, gore. I'm surprised he has this like uh, German style cross. Well, the guy stole it, but he gets it back. Um, this one again was he's being mind controlled, so he's like, well. If I give myself a concussion, you can't control my mind. That's a funny gag, but again, it feels like a Deadpool gag, not a, a Lobo. But again, like I said, I'm not an expert, so maybe things have changed. So uh, there he is. He's he's back, the main man. I love this guy. You would think this would be like some cutesy pie, silly billy thing. It's actually, it's fun that he has like a living emoji as kind of like a a sidekick. So um, uh, some twists, I don't want to spoil them, but, um, uh, and there's just a couple bit, okay, so one issue I do have, even though he handles the cartoony stuff well, I feel like, uh, how do I say this? The quality of Kyle Hotz's art sometimes works against the comedy and the story because like with Bisley Lobo was over the top the world the worlds he went to were so over the top that it really matched the tone whereas this feels like a place that like Green Lantern would visit and yes I know Lobo and Green Lantern have interacted before but you understand what I'm saying when it's a Lobo story like everything is just crazy and just everything is is over the top like the 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 framing device for Lobo paramilitary Christmas special is that um, this weirdo family they have to distract their children because they didn't get gifts cool enough and the children are about to kill them so they have to tell them the story of Lobo um, but like everything's just crazy um, whereas this feels like it feels like Superman could show up or Batman in a space suit so that aspect and also some of Kyle Stark's humor feels outdated it's not exactly I did a thing or um he's behind me isn't he it's not that but it's from that time period and this is subtle and it might be subjective but anyway it's definitely a recommend this thing is excellent it's like 50 pages and it's it maintains the quality uh, on every page so go check it out and then go check out uh, comic book the comic book a functional history of modern comics thanks for watching bye